I'll, I'll tell you guys this. Uh, I've always prided myself in doing the right thing um, in this business, and I can't say that's true about everybody in this business. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very cutthroat business, and a lot of guys will tell you that. But uh, I allowed myself uh, at one point when I was in Tennessee uh, to get caught up in something I, I regret, and I still regret it. But uh, the ownership there, uh, Amy Adams Strunk and her family came in and, and told me I was going to be the head coach in 2016 uh, before they went through the, the Rooney rule. And so I sat there knowing I was the head coach in 16 as they went through this fake hiring process, knowing I uh, knowing a lot of the coaches that they were interviewing, knowing how much they prepared to go through those interviews, knowing that, that everything they could do and they had no chance of getting that job. And actually the GM, John Robinson, he was in on the interview with me. He, he had no idea why he's interviewing me that I have the job already. And I feel like, you know, I regret that's because I pride myself in my, my kids first that they do the right thing. And I always said that to the players. And here I am, the head guy not doing it. And I've regretted that since then. It was the wrong thing to do. I, I'm sorry I did that. Um, but it was not the way to go about it. I should have interviewed like everybody else and got hired because of the interview, not, not early on. So that's, that's probably my biggest regret. Hey Michael, do you wow. ever go to uh, do you ever go to the drugstore and they say, "Would you like your receipt?" and you say yes, and then they give you like this long scroll with like a bunch of coupons you're never gonna use. Like they gotta roll Shout up the receipt. CBS. Like yeah, CBS. like I regret asking for this receipt. There yeah, are right. receipts, and then there's that. What Mike Malarkey just provided. Put Mike Malarkey in the name, same name. VIP section, the same VIP name, section name. as Bruce Arians. Put Mike Malarkey in the same VIP section as Bruce Arians. There's talking about it and then there's being about it. And Mike Malarkey voluntarily acknowledging his role. Said it at the Super Bowl. I said it a million times. You said it a million times. Unless and until white people take up this fight and dismantle the system that they created and benefit from. This is a man who benefited from this system saying this ain't right. It's, it takes more Mike Malarkey's, okay? To, to truly bring everything to light, to air the NFL's dirty laundry when it comes to its centuries, it's century old, I beg your pardon, century old practice of systemic racism that Brian Flores, amendment by amendment and now defendant by defendant and plaintiff by plaintiff continues to expose the thing I like about what Brian Flores and now Ray Horton and Steve Wilkes. They are now they've now joined him as plaintiffs in this lawsuit. They've added the Titans, the Cardinals and the Texans as as defendants in addition to the Broncos, the Giants and the Dolphins, of course, um, and the rest of the NFL as, as John Doe's. Um, what I love about it is Brian Flores, while employed by the Pittsburgh Steelers, is not playing prevent. Brian Flores continues to bring right. pressure. He continues right. to apply right. pressure. He, they continue right. to blitz the NFL. Oh, oh, your nice little diversity committee. Yeah, that's nice. Your hiring mandate yeah. for one minority. Black, yeah. uh, you know, person of color or woman on offense that the league's going to pay for. Yeah, that's cute. We ain't finished with you yet. We ain't through with you yet. Okay. You're not right, just going to go more. on with your more. off season and go to the draft and start next season. Yeah, I, congratulations on your amazing month of March when it comes to free agency. Oh, that, that, that's awesome. But there's still business to be done and we're still we're still going to apply pressure, says Brian Flores and now co plaintiffs Steve Wilkes and Ray Horton and maybe others and ally Mike Malarkey who says something in 2020 that thankfully is just now seeing the light of day. Mike, major. Mike, you, sometimes this is major. Sometimes you have to know. Sometimes you have to know your opponent. You have to know who you're going to pick a fight with, and what their tendencies are, and the amount of urgency and the amount of seriousness that they'll bring to the fight. And I think the NFL just totally misjudged Brian Flores. Okay, let me tell you, who Brian Flores is Brian Flores. Uh, he's a New Yorker, came up the hard way, son of immigrants in New York went to BC was a defensive player at Boston College. very, you know, leader defensive aggressive. When he finally got his opportunity to lead the Patriots defense, he was more aggressive than any Patriots defensive coordinator they've ever had. I'm going to include Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. he, he took aggressiveness to another level in their 2018 championship season. This is who he is. 
Very smart guy, very serious guy. So, when the NFL, I think the NFL made a big mistake when it said, in response to Brian Flores' contract, I mean, uh, Brian Flores' lawsuit. Lawsuit. Yeah, without said, merit. <laughs> without merit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? <laughs> really? Oh, really? <laughs> without merit. You know, I always go back to, like, sometimes you know, there's a trigger for people. I'm convinced. We were talking about uh, DC uh, politics and in the, in, in, in the Senate and Congress. I'm convinced that William Jefferson Clinton met his match and got himself in trouble that day when he said on camera, I did not have sex with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I bet she was watching and said, oh, oh, I'm that woman now? Okay, <laughs> all right then. All right, I got something for you. Oh, I'm that woman after what we shared. So it's the same thing. That was a trigger and that, he went down a path that, that history has chronicled very well. The NFL, by saying this is without merit to Brian Flores, who not only has help over the top now, but he's got additional receipts, Mike. You talked about that long receipt. How about he's got details, emails from his, uh, uh, his correspondence with Chris Greer, the general manager in Miami, and others. He's doc he doc there's a paper trail. He documented it. About yes. Stephen Ross. He documented it. And about that was the tanking from allegations. December. Yes. From December yes. in two, uh, December 2019, Mike Malarkey, yes. that's a receipt. Bill Belichick, whether he wanted to or not, he's got a receipt with his text exchange with Brian Flores. At some point, the NFL should just say, "All right, we're wrong here. We're 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 we're, we're, we're wrong here," because the, the beautiful thing, and, I, and I'll say this before I pass it back to you, the beautiful thing and the authentic thing about what Brian Flores is doing here with this lawsuit. If you look at the ask, I don't see I want $25 million. It's nothing, it's nothing I don't reasonable. see that. No, no, he's he's talking about transparency. I want transparency right. in the hiring practices. I want there right. to be incentive and, and, and that's I don't like for hiring that, black that I'm not feeling. I don't like that. I know, that you know, I, like, you know, I'm not like, feeling that one. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, I'm not. I'm with yeah. you too. I'm with you. Yeah, but yeah. but these are the things he's asking for. He's asking for changes to the infrastructure changes mm -hmm. to the communication. Like when he mentioned John Elway and John Elway took exception when he said Elway was disheveled, you know, talking about a man you know, talking about the way the brother dressed, say he was disheveled and hung over <laughs> and Elway was like, no, we had a great interview. Okay, in that case, it's Brian Flores' word versus Elway's. Well, Elway, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see the notes from John Elway. I'd love to see a, 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 just a, a list, a very clear list of, hey, why we thought Brian Flores was not the guy for us and we went in this direction. Yeah. And Ray Horton has receipts. Ray Horton has receipts too. Ray Horton's Steve receipts I mean, match up with my, they match up with Mike Malarkey's. Steve, Steve Wilkes in Arizona. I mean, it's like, Y'all can't just sweep this aside, sweep it under the rug and think that we're just going to forget about it, says these black coaches who have been denied opportunities for decades. And they continue to say the quiet parts out loud and dare these teams in the NFL to prove them wrong. You know, right. it's like if I if I got the receipt, no different than if I'm going back to the store, I have the receipt here. What are you going to do about this? How we, how are you going to explain this away? Because in, 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 in each of these instances, these teams have some explaining to do. You That's know, right. even That's if they're right. even if their explanation is reasonable or rational, they still have to find a way to prove to, to disprove the evidence that we have seen over the over over several decades throughout NFL history when it comes to there being a double standard. There's 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 tangible and empirical, but also anecdotal evidence of a double standard throughout NFL history when it comes to coaches. So now it's the NFL's day of reckoning where they are what well, they're on trial and may have to prove that this is just a figment of our imagination. The only th other thing that makes me somewhat uncomfortable is Lovey yeah. Smith here. Um, because Lovey Smith. Well, Lovey right. Smith. No, no, and we not, had this conversation I'm not before at all. Well, I am because Lovey Smith, I, I, as we've said before, 
Well, we talked about this before. Lovey Smith, if you put Lovey Smith and Brian Flores side by side, I could argue that Lovey Smith is more qualified than Brian Flores is. So you're telling me that now if you're going off what the report was, whether it was the Eagles defensive coordinator, Josh McCown and Brian right. Flores, if you're going off the reports, right. media reports, which aren't always 100% accurate or reliable, but if you're going off right. of that right. to suggest that the Texans then pivoted away from where they wanted to go with Josh McCown and did not go with Brian Flores, but instead settled for Lovey Smith. I feel bad for Lovey Smith because Lovey Smith is not Josh McCown. You understand what I'm saying? Like Lovey Smith is right, qualified, right? right. right and Lovey exactly. Smith exactly. deserves the opportunity. Job. So I feel yeah. like so he, he's. I was watching Collateral last night. He's collateral damage in this. He's caught in a crossfire. This. He's an innocent bystander in this. Who just had a, yeah. a, a resume and a qualification that made him qualified to do this job. I hate that he his credibility is undermined as a byproduct well, of like, these yeah, allegations. Yeah. That's the only part if, I'm if, uncomfortable with. But again, yeah. prove Brian Flores wrong. Prove him wrong that right. you did that you did not hire him for any other reason other than the fact that he filed a lawsuit against the NFL. Hey, listen, hey man. Um, if it happened that way, I'm with you. If that's exactly what happened, if it's a little different story, if Lovey Smith's story, if, if the, his the story of his actual hiring is not what is presented by Brian Flores and his attorneys. Yes, I'm uncomfortable and I feel bad for Lovey. But if it's the other way around. Yeah. 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 Lovey, you just you you, the you got the caught up in the machine. Yes, you got you got caught up in it. And I know many and coaches I'll, wouldn't turn it down. They wouldn't turn it down. Sure. If they're, if they're going to be sure. if you're going to be a pawn in this larger game and the pawn and, and being a pawn Results in well, he may not even, dollars, but he may not have even. Yeah, but I don't. But he may I not even know. go there because he, he, he exactly. He may not be complicit in this. But but I'll, okay. I'll, but pawns I'll, don't know. I'll, but hey, but just because you're a pawn, pawns don't know. Pawns don't always know that they're pawns. Well, that's so what I'm saying. Like but the way you, but the knowing. way you describe it just now, the way you describe yeah. it just now is that he went along to get along, and I, and I don't know that he. I'm not saying that about Lovey, but he may have unknowingly been a part of the of the larger game, but here, man, larger look. chess game. But I'm saying this. I'm agreeing with you insofar as that hiring a Lovey Smith, hiring a black coach, a qualified black coach, does not provide you cover. And more than one thing can be true at the same time. They could have blackballed or whiteballed, if you prefer, Brian Flores, and hired a qualified black coach. Yes, Just yes. as the Miami Dolphins could have wronged Brian Flores and went and hired yes. Mike McDaniel. That doesn't right. that doesn't provide them cover. <laughs> you know what I mean for what they for doing Brian Flores wrong or the Texans hiring Lovey Smith doesn't provide them cover for not hiring Brian Flores or for using David Cully the way that they did. I'm so we can have multiple with, truths with, with parallel truths here. Yeah, I, I do need to uh, uh, say this so about the NFL if they wanted to and they don't but if they really wanted to uh, conduct an investigation that that brought a that brought an objective result. They could, but they usually don't. They usually go into an investigation. They call up, uh, you know, their law firm in New York. You have Ted Wells and, and others, who kind of do the job that they want. So whether it was the Flake Gate, whether it was the bullying uh, in, in with Richie Incognito, uh, oh, by Richie Incognito in Miami whether it's bounty gate, they usually go in with an idea of what they're going to get and they get that result just like sure. the NFL did this with Robert Mueller. Yeah, that Robert Mueller uh, before mm -hmm. he before there was a Mueller report. Robert Mueller was hired by the NFL to find if there was a phone call made tipping the mm -hmm. NFL off about that Ray Rice video and Robert mm -hmm. Mueller did an investigation. And he found nothing. Oh, yeah, but <laughs> I didn't find anything. I didn't find yeah. anything and he didn't he didn't even need a bill Barr to soften it for him. I mean, he just didn't he didn't find anything. So if the NFL really wants to get to the bottom of this. It can. Well, I'm not sure. There you go. It wants no, to. You, ain't, you ain't even got to be not sure. 
you are sure. I appreciate you being fair, but you are sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. they, no, there is no, there is no. So you can find out. They don't want. They don't want to. Right now. It's for this. It's, right it's the same reason. You can find reason. out today. It's the same reason. You can find out today what why. Stephen Ross did. You know a conversation why I don't sit around that I don't sit around spending a lot of time on and a concept that I don't hold my breath about it is reparations. Because not only can America literally not afford to pay black people what they owe us economically for building this country. Reparations also comes with an admission that white people didn't get ahead because they're better. Okay, that the game was rigged that the system was rigged in your favor. So it, it, it comes with an admission that you that you didn't just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You know, I, Martin Luther King comes to mind and it's a cruel joke to ask a bootless man to pull himself up by his bootstraps that that this that this country you you had certain inherent advantages that allowed you and your descendants to be as successful and that that created the wealth gap in this country. Likewise, the NFL does not want to dismantle this system because they benefit from it. A, these white owners don't want to be told what to do with their family run businesses more often than not. B, these coaches don't want to be told who they can't hire because that comes at their right. expense. Okay, as I've said before, the, 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 the issue is not just at the ownership level. It's at the head coach level because a lot of these head coaches that's why Bruce Arians, what he did was, was, was big time. These head coaches are continuing to perpetuate this cycle by, by maintaining a glass ceiling at the coordinator level, which is a step right the next step uh, beneath head coach, maintaining that glass ceiling, hiring their boys literally and figuratively to be coordinators, okay? Or these GMs. And these and these agents are in cahoots when it comes to which coaches get hot get hired. There's an entire yeah. system that involves the media that involves NFL insiders that involves empire owners GMs. There's an entire power dynamic here that if, that if they upset it, e there's an economic shift that would take place that they ain't willing. To, they're not willing to undergo. What? Well, okay. If they don't, if, if you really don't want to get to the root of the problem, you know what the NFL should do right now? Probably settle. You better settle because if Brian Flores has this kind of support now and he's got people who are either intentionally or unintentionally bringing receipts like Mike Malarkey said this before he even knew about a, a, a Brian Flores law. Yeah. This is two years ago. So yeah. that's unintentional. Bill Belichick was unintentional. Uh, Steve Wilkes is intentional. Ray Horton is, in, is intentional. But what happens when Brian Flores Shows you another card. Hey, oh, we he's got we more. playing poker. You know, he's I, got more. I haven't showed you. I haven't showed you everything I've got in yeah, my hand. You know he's got more. Do you want to do you want to take a chance that I can embarrass you further? Or do you want to work with us? It's up to you and you don't even know yeah. what 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 other intentional and unintentional comments are called are, are coming. It it from can never either be current coaches or former coaches, but see, but see, even if they wanted to settle or they wanted to say, hey, you know what? Let's just work together on this. They can't be trusted for all the reasons we just laid out because they don't really want to dismantle this system. They've been given every opportunity, every opportunity to do the right thing. They wouldn't. It took a lawsuit. That's why I said the other day, they should be ashamed of themselves that they've had to force, they have to now force teams to put a minority coach, a person of color or a woman on the offensive side of the ball. That's what it's come to. They should be ashamed of themselves that the word incentive has to come up when it comes to black coaches. They should be ashamed of themselves for giving teams that develop black coaches draft compensation when another team decides, oh wow, that black coach is the best coach for our organization and the, and the team that they came from or GM for that matter, the team that they came from gets draft pick compensation. They cannot be trusted to do the right thing. They cannot be trusted to police themselves. This is just on the racial front. This is just on the racial equity front. We ain't even talked about gender because they got Letitia right. James and six attorneys general up their ass now. Bro, did you read the letter that came out today? Okay, these recent allegations suggest I'm, I'll, I'll just pick it up. Um. 
I'll read it from the top. We all watched in horror in 2014 when the video of Ray Rice striking, knocking out, and spitting on his fiance was made public. In the aftermath, you promised to take gender violence seriously and prove the institutional mm -hmm. culture for women in the NFL. These recent allegations suggest that you have not. Female employees reported that they were subjected to repeated viewings of the Rice video with commentary by coworkers that the victim had brought the violence on herself. Mm -hmm. Other women reported that in a training intended to improve sensitivity on the issue, they were asked to raise their hand to self-identify if they had been victims of domestic violence or knew someone who had. This is not doing better. Anti-discrimination laws in many states, including New York, prohibit employers from subjecting domestic violence victims, as well as women and people of color, to a hostile work environment. Mike, they're not playing. All of this right. is entirely unacceptable and potentially unlawful. The NFL must do better. Pink jerseys are not a replacement for equal treatment yeah. and full inclusion of women right. in the workplace. Our offices will use the full weight of our authority to investigate and prosecute allegations of harassment, discrimination, or retaliation by employees throughout our states, including at the National Football League. In short, it's above them now. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is something that the league uh, hasn't hasn't taken seriously, has had many opportunities to take seriously. And now when you do that, when you keep when you keep taking that approach, the message you're sending to everybody else is, hey, uh, you'll have this energy, you'll have this focus for a little bit and then we'll move on and you'll be distracted by the games. You'll be distracted by the offseason and it will go away. We get to we get to uh, we get to set the temperature. We get to frame the discussion and what these uh, attorneys general are saying is that no, you don't. And what Brian Flores is saying is no, you don't. You don't. Yeah. We're going to take it outside of, of the NFL uh, meeting rooms. We're going to take it out of the NFL uh, uh, framework and we're really going to uh, attack you and see how you deal with it. So I, I can't wait to see what, what, what comes of it because something more will come. And I, I also oh, I yeah. want to say this. There, I want to, I want and to say more this people too. will come. More people will come. Strength in numbers. If, I, I think I, I feel like I'm on an island because I'm one of the few people who says the Rooney rule in spirit is a good rule. In spirit, if you follow the spirit of it, it, it it's fine. It should transform you. But I would say also, what the Rooney rule, what the Rooney's are about benefits all coaches. Benefits all coaches. Yeah. What they're saying is slow down. Be patient. Develop Michael. coaches. Stop with the one and dones. Stop the, looking the around rule. after two rough years. It's just, it's just it's just the messaging going back to politics. It's not a rule. It's a rule of thumb. It's a philosophy. It's a paradigm. Yeah, some would call it a suggestion. That's why it hasn't worked. So, you know, and listen, the Rudys have the right idea. That's all it is, is an ideal. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.